Okay. This is the new microphone. Oops, not that one. This is the new microphone. This is the new microphone. Okay, microphone, that's high. That was high. That's good. Okay. Boom. Okay, hello everybody. And it's cheesecake time. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to Happy Healthy Why for How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy as the long title is. That's what it's all about. Making food, doing things that will make your wife happy. So I've got my main camera set up. I made a few little tricks and gadgets that I didn't have before. Uh, today we're going to do the recipes. And today my recipes are from, come on, that I place, let me bring it up, so that I have it on my website. There is definitely a link in the description if you want to get to it. Definitely one there. Here we go. So, happyhealthywife.com. Sorry, happyhealthywife.net. No, dot com. No, dot com. So I already bought that domain. I didn't want to pay the thousand dollars so it would cost to take it from. Actually, probably more than that. So there it is. The very first one is, of course, this recipe. So that's what I'm going to be referencing. Looking at the recipe series, let's go straight into the cheesecake. It's going to take the longest, the longest it is, and it's going to be cheesecake. It's all right there. Happyhealthywife.net. You go there, the very first link will be this one, how to make light, fluffy, decadent cheesecake. It's exactly what we're going to do today. Mm. Got to start with the graham crackers. Oh, I hope you have your cream cheese. If you noticed the recipe earlier, you have your cream cheese all softened up. If not, it's okay. You can take it out now. We're not going to use it right away. But see, this is two bars of eight ounces, so 16 ounces of cream cheese going into this recipe is going to be lovely i have some other tricks new tricks today as well but for now let's just go straight into making cheesecake i need graham crackers two whole bags bags if you want to call it that okay let me see i got this one too yeah the standard honey made let me see so this one we've been using s'mores so but you want two full, what do you call these? Bags of graham crackers, I guess is what you call them. That one's not full, so we're gonna put that one back. That's our uh, s'mores bunch. Had some lovely s'mores the other day. Roasting marshmallows on a real fire, not a gas stove. A wood burning fire, which was good. You know, coals are another great way to toast marshmallows. Okay. Oh, let's see. And because, you know, why do I need two boxes? I don't. Now that I have room for the box, let's go ahead and drop that one right in there. Mm. The one thing you might be disappointed in today, I mean, you know, there's more than just cheesecake, but the one thing you might be disappointed about is that we're not going to taste test the cheesecake. No taste testing of the cheesecake today. Nope, not one bit. All right, I'm just going to check to make sure the volume that you can hear what's going on. How do I do that? Whoops. I don't want to undo. Oh, jeez. I have to go back to happyoldywife.net. Do, 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 do. Happyoldywife.net. And it's the very first one. Okay. Bingo. I meant to do this. I just want to double check that the volume is there. 
I'll hit play again. There we go. Sweet. Okay, I can hear myself, so that means you can hear me, so that is good. Turn the volume down. So sometimes I use this to look at my chat, so because it's not always easy to see it over there. Guys, the chat is really small from time to time. But anyway, so yeah, I got one box left. We're gonna move that away. And now we need graham crackers. We need some cinnamon. Let me get back to the recipe. Do 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 do. Oh, there's even a live stream right there. This works too. Good. So I can have my live stream right here embedded, right there embedded in the recipe itself. So I don't have to double check. Oh, actually though, it doesn't have the chat in there, which is why I have the recipe uh, elsewhere. What if I do that? What's it going to do? Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, oh, YouTube. Okay. Back to where it should be. So the first thing you gotta do is gotta mash up these graham crackers. Mash them up. Okay. Do 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 do. That doesn't help. Graham crackers in the crust. In a mixing bowl. Oh, for the crust. Combining yours with a fork and it'll evenly moistened. Uh -huh. All right, so what are the ingredients for the crust? It's the graham crackers, the butter, and the cinnamon. Uh, I should make that more clear. The graham crackers, half a cup of butter, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, or more if you're a cinnamon lover, like my daughter. We'll stick with a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, because that's what it's called for. I need the butter, too. We're getting the cinnamon right now. And since my doctor is a lover of cinnamon, I know I have a big thing. I'm oh, just surprised it's, no, I'm not surprised. Never mind. It was behind the coffee, but just because she loves coffee even more. There we go. Big thing of cinnamon, because my daughter loves cinnamon. So we got our, oh, I can smell that cinnamon. We gotta get the butter melted. And we gotta smash the crackers. Many ways to smash the crackers. My favorite way to smash the crackers is with one of those smashing crackers knives. As well as putting it inside. Well, this is a Ziploc knockoff bag. Yeah. It was worth a long time ago talking about. You know, don't trust the knockoffs. course, because they want you to spend the money on the more expensive Ziplocs. Well, we're not going to worry about that. We are going to smash them up. But, you know, I also need a half a cup, half a cup, half a stick, half a cup. Half a cup of butter. I got to see if I have enough butter here. I get full bars, usually when I do my butter. There's a lot of butter, actually, in this household. We are not afraid of butter, even though a long time ago, butter was apparently the evil. In the house, and they had margarine instead. I went to the margarine. Well, my parents actually went to the margarine phase. I had margarine house. I grew up in my parents' house. It was all margarine. We did not have butter. But no, we're going butter. So these will be smashed up. Excuse me. Oh. Right, let me get my friend here. Now that we're gone, that boom. Here's my friend. My local camera, so you can see more clearly. Head up, what's going on? Smashing. Smashing. Okay, so we got my friend here. And I need to get the butter going. I have a new friend, too. Just got this. So I thought, you know what? It'd be much better, instead of me being over there, if you'd actually see me cook. So I got a campfire stove. So we can do some cooking over here now. I just need the top. 
Peace. Now, I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed in the campfire stuff. I'm a little disappointed in it. And it's good and all. There's, I'll let you know what the disappointment is. I'll show it to you. Not a completely big deal. It'll still work. But I'm a little disappointed. I mean, you know, you're buying a cheap campfire still. You're not expecting to be perfect, but you are expecting to at least be level. And that is my complaint. So let's see. Goes on like this. There we go. <laughs> as long as you uh, put it in the right direction, not upside down. That would be silly. There we go. Okay. Yeah, just use it as a test for trial run. Finally, figure out how to work it correctly. Yeah. Maybe I should have read the instructions. I did not. That's okay. But you can see when I put this on, the top on, it's got a little bit of a wobble. And that is kind of a disappointment. We'll still work with it today. We'll still work with it today. But I definitely want to melt the butter first. Let's get my half a cup of butter. Hopefully, I'm going to see how many tablespoons are in this one left. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should have known. All right. It says a half a cup, right? A whole half a cup of butter. Eight tablespoons. Oh, that's perfect. Never mind. I was thinking 16 for a cup of butter. We got eight. So here we go. So for most of you, that'd be a stick of butter. For me, it's uh, half a stick of butter because I'm using the Kerry Gold recently because that's what Costco had. So I bought the nice thick Kerry Gold. Now they have a different one now that I'm using that I'm going to be using later. Right now, it's the Kerry Gold because they have a salted version of Kerry Gold that I'm not using. Let's see. So we got a melt of the butter. Let's get that over here so you can see this thing work. The butter. We're going to use a special melting pot. A cute little melting pot. Oh, that's perfect. Is it? Maybe not. Let's use a small, small pot. I don't want to have to hold it the entire time because I'm going to eat. There we go. All right, and so we're going to take our smallest. There we go, the smallest one. Perfect. And I can just put in a whole thing. Eh. Or I could cut it up. Well, we're not. We're not being faster. We're just going to put the whole thing in. Half a cup of butter. More or most, you'll be one stick of butter. All right. um, oh, oh, didn't lock it in yet. There you go, I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to just double check. Took a while to figure out that this can, this little dent in the can, that's where it goes in to lock it in correctly to get the full power. So let's turn this bad boy on. There we go. And yeah, we don't need that much heat. But it's always going to be our heat source when we do our meat. All right, let's nice and nice low melt. Let's let that sit on low and melt while we crash up the graham crackers. You want to get them nice and small. You can use your hand, that'll start, but I'm of the opinion that you really want to get them nice and small. And yes, I'm going to have a mixing bowl for this later. But for now, because I don't think you want to mix it together in a plastic bag. So what's going on today? Using the flat side, not the meat tenderizing side, see the flat side? Meat tenderizing side, flat side, because we don't want to put holes in the bag and have the grandparents fly everywhere. So if you've ever made a graham cracker crust before, this is what you do. Take out some graham crackers, pound them to smithereens. 
stuff it. Melt some butter. If you want cinnamon, you can use some cinnamon too. Butter is nicely melting. It's almost there. We lost some of the butter. That was completely my clumsiness involved there. All right, let's clean that up. Completely my clumsiness. Lost some of the melted butter. We're not gonna replace it. I could get some more butter, but I probably lost a tablespoon or two. It looks like we're good here. Turn that off. Uh, I'm hoping the butter will rest, melt the rest of the way. Although, it needs heat though. Butter does not melt at room temperature. Uh, butter on the floor. A little more clean up. Clean up in the happy other way. Kitchen happens all the time. I'm hoping the heat, the residual heat from the pan. Yeah. That's nice and melted right there. There you go. Nice and melted. Lost me a tablespoon. It'll be all right. Let's see. Let's the graham crackers. Take a look at them. Okay. Some more pounding needed. They're getting there. Nice, have a very fine graham cracker crust. Very fine. I think this is pretty good. Pretty good on the graham cracker. Pretty fine. All right, takes care of that back. Okay. Now I need a little bowl, little mixing bowl. And I do mean little. Let's see what we got. in here let me get out let's see the cheesecake mixing bowl I like a little bigger so we don't get as much messy What's going on here oh excuse the train floating by there we go it's a bigger mixing bowl whole set of mixing bowls there I'll need a container but that's good for now oh wait where's the uh oh it is there never mind oh hold on let me change that there we go. That's better. Hmm, I could have put in the link to the happyhealthywife.net. Oh, let's do that. Actually, well. Hmm. Feels like some of the graham crabs. Yep, some of the graham crabs got out of the bag. So little holes in the bag. Some graham crabs work their way through. I can totally feel it. All right, one thing we can do. So then actually into the chat. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Here it goes. Okay. I can even put a link to the recipes. Oh, beautiful. There we go. Should have done this earlier, but now we go. Oh. Well, that's interesting. 
It's gotta be way too what I wanna do. Hold on, let me see this. That's funny. Um, okay. Oh, check, click on this. That's the link I wanted. Beautiful. Ah, right, there we go. Now we have penned the message. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. We have pinned the message. All right, so there it is. Message now pinned. The link to the recipe that we're working on today. The other thing we're doing today. It's there. Uh, I've got my recipe back again. So I'm using happyhealthywife.net. Another place I use our recipes is through Cozy. That's why that our whole family can share the recipes. Whoops. That's for the cheesecake part later. All right, so here we go. Smells like graham crackers. And then now this is gonna be about seven, six and a half tablespoons of butter instead of the, um, the amount I really wanted, half a cup, but that's okay. So let's see, half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of cinnamon too. And then we'll, we'll kind of taste it and kind of tell. We should use it, how much is that? So into the graham cracker. Let me switch me back over to where I need it. There it is. That's all right. Okay. Into the graham cracker with the butter. Hear that? You can see with all that pounding, the graham cracker actually got through. So I just kind of want to wipe that up. I'm a little picky. So let's wipe up the graham cracker crumbs and any excess butter from the table. Make it better. Bottom of the pot as well. Just the crumbs. I'm just not thrilled with all those crumbs. There we go. Okay, much better. Much better. Feels better. And we got a mixed meal. Let me see. We're going to... Pound it into a dish. Let me get that. Um, ooh, perfect. It was there waiting for me. Spring form pan. If you do not have a spring form pan, you can use a pie tin as well. But I would say the spring form pan is generally the best way. Come on. The best way for a cheesecake. You go on a spring form pan like this one. Because you can, once it's done, you undo it, take it off, and there's your cheesecake ready to cut. So a springform pan is definitely one. If you're making cheesecake, especially this one, and you definitely want to make this cheesecake. Because what the cheesecake you get from either Costco or in the store, it's just not as good as this one. I'll be honest, it's just not as good. I have had it, but this one, we, I like it a lot better because it's nice, it's fluffy, it's not so dense. Oh, I'm forgetting my measurement spoons are. There we go. I'll need a little bit later, so we're gonna leave the whole thing out. It wants half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon. Now a little cinnamon goes a long way. And this does not mean you can buy those cinnamon, you know, the pre-cinnamon graham crackers. Do not do that because that has a lot of sugar on it too. You don't need all the excess sugar. Don't we? A little cinnamon goes a long way. Uh, uh, half, maybe three fourths. We're going three fourths. Do, do, don't be afraid to mix that through. But I am going to need. Let's see. I'm thinking. I'm thinking ahead. So I'm going to have to press it into here. By the way, because I'm going to press it into there. You know, you don't probably need to do this, and it's not going to tell you this, but I'm still going to do it anyway. I always like to um, uh, grease up whatever pan 
that my uh, baked goods are going in. Grease it, especially if you're doing casserole dishes. Grease it just a little bit. That was like a quarter of a teaspoon, I would say, of oil. Just to grease up the edges. Keep it from sticking. Even though this is supposed to be a quote unquote non stick pan. There you go, come on. Keep it in there. Beautiful. All right. Just a light layer of oil is good. Light, very light. Probably notice it's there. Now you've got our lips. I'm going to put that stuff in there. I'm going to use my hands, of course, to put it in. Let's see. I'm going to also have to kind of smash it down. In order to smash it down, flat, too. It has to be flat mash. Sometimes we use cups. I'm looking for a cup that would work. Because those cups all have lips. Those don't work. Measuring cup, nope. Something flat, huh. Oh, we'll just do it by hand. And the mix in, we're gonna use a little, a small spatula. I have another spatula I usually use for this, but being as it was used earlier today. I think it was. Don't have it right now. Anyway, in goes the butter. All that butter. Just put it all in. Don't need to be shy about it. I mean, you could even put the graham cracker directly in the butter itself if you want all the butter. And you're going to mix it up to get a nice, pasty graham cracker crust. It's got to be sticky. The main thing you're going for is a sticky crust. The graham cracker, basically the reason for the butter in here and the oil, if I have to add some oil, I might add some oil, is that the graham crackers will stick together, lump up together, kind of like a glue for the crackers, like a glue. By the way, if you're watching, uh, last I heard, maybe come to me because those cowboys are getting roasted and toasted. The last I heard, they were down 27 to nothing on this wild card weekend. 27 to nothing. Of course, that might change. But on this day, nice 27 to nothing beatdown from the visiting Green Bay Packers. Ooh. So maybe you're over here because the game's over. So you want something to do. You want to make some cheesecake to have a celebration for your Packer fan or to drown your misery. And if you're a Cowboy fan, it just does mean that the Cowboys don't have to worry about the Niners if they go on to lose. All right. So you take all this beautiful, beautiful buttery crust and you just pour it in. Now, it might be the case that I have too much crust, and that's fine. For some people, like my son, he loves the crust. Well, I should have tasted it before I put it in there, actually. I want to make sure it's simony enough. Let's see. So we'll just take a little. See what it's like. Make sure it's pretty good. Graham cracker. Hmm, a good hint of cinnamon. Yep, that's good. That's a good crust. Okay. Now the thing is, you gotta smash it down. It's gonna become the layer, the base layer of our cheesecake. I'm gonna have to add some. Uh, Because you got to make sure it sticks because we're going to the, the top on the edges like this. Got to make sure it sticks. Now, last time my son actually pounded in the thing, helping out. My daughter, who made this last time, one that we thoroughly enjoyed on uh, 
New Year's. Was it New Year's or was it Christmas? I don't remember. Anyway, over the holidays. Was that the rounded edges? Yeah. Went a little handy. The rounded edges um, were kind of funny. Anyway, what I was saying, my son, this is his favorite part. It's a graham cracker crust. My favorite part is the cheesecake part. Now, I'm sorry, if you're expecting us to taste test this today, unfortunately, it probably is not going to happen. What am I doing here? I am pushing the graham cracker to the edge, as you can see. It's probably not going to happen. I probably should watch look at the direction. Pre-baked, right? Pre-baked the oven? We'll see in a second. Uh, because the cheesecake, after you cook and after you bake it, which we'll get done, that part will do. We'll even take it out of the oven. It needs to rest for like at least two hours. And I don't think you want to sit here and wait for it to rest two hours. Certainly probably don't want to do that. So, no cheesecake taste test today, but I can assure you, we have had this cheesecake many a times, same recipe. It's Benefit. All right, if you've done the Costco cheesecake, it's just really huge and too big. Honestly, unless you're feeding the whole army. Uh, but it is dense. And most of the times you go to a place for a New York cheesecake or you go to Cheesecake Factory, maybe you go there for a cheesecake. Again, the cheesecake part is dense. Ours is not quite so dense. So ours, I find, this recipe has a lighter, fluffierness to it. It's more closer to a custard level of, um, of silkiness as opposed to a dense, you know, cheese. So I like it a lot. I like it better than what you would get. All right, so there we go. So we've got our, now, now i got to double check, see what we got to do next. Honestly, it's been a long time since I've made the cheesecake. Because whenever we're making cheesecake, that's what Happy Healthy Daughter. <coughs> that's what my daughter, Happy Healthy Daughter, volunteers to do is to make the cheesecake. But it's okay, even if this needs something, uh, needs some other work, and I think it does, like baking maybe. All right, let me look prep. Heat to 325, she's done already. Lightly cooked bottom size, an agent spring form of the non sink Oh, see, they, they don't use cooking spray. I don't want to use cooking spray. You know, I, I fear the first rule of baking, preheat the oven. Combine the ears of the fork until for the crust. Combine the ingredients, yeah, I should tell you what ingredients in there. Lightly coat the bottom of the size of an eight inch spring form pan, which I did. Pour the crumbs in the pan and using the bottom of the measuring cup or a smooth bottom of glass. No, I use a spatula, it's fine. Press the crumbs in the base and one inch. That's more than one inch on the sides, by the way. It's definitely more than an inch on the sides. This is that extra. Refrigerate. Perfect. Don't have to bake this. So this is going to refrigerate to kind of set it. Because butter, as you know, gets hard <clears throat> at refrigerated temperatures. Oh, now the trouble here, though, is finding space in my refrigerator. So I've got some horchata. I've got some... Oh, right on top of the eggs. I hear you laugh. Right on top of it. You know, it's in a carton. So, of course, the eggs aren't going to get smashed. And that's three and four pounds pretty light. All right, done with that. Won't need you, probably. No, you're not going to use you anymore. In the sink you go. All right, that part is the next part we need to tackle is the cheesecake part itself for the filling. No, there's a cheesecake. In the bowl of an electric mixer. So, you know, I could bring out the big boy. Oh, yeah, my light's out. It's okay. I'll have to... um. Charge that again. In the bowl. All right, the sun's getting ready to peer in through here. I was hoping to be cloudy today, but it's not cloudy. In the bowl, we're gonna use a mixer. So now we now have an old mixer, but it's a good one. Take a look at this mixer. Uh, I didn't get wiped off last time. I see some flour on it or sugar or salt or something. Let me wipe this off first. Wherever that person was, who didn't clean it, it's probably me, 
the last use, I always want to clean off the mixer before you put it away. There we go. There we go. No harm, no foul. Just wipe off the mixer. You don't want any other stuff in here. So we've got our mixer. One more, 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 less them over here. Just double checking. Okay, just double checking to see where I am. Okay, here we go. So now this time our mixer is really good because it has multiple, it has an actual like low speed setting. This is the other mixer I've been using. Level one is not low speed. I don't think I need brown sugar today, do I? I hope not, because brown sugar is the one that's Beat the cream cheese on low speed for a minute until smooth and free of any lumps. Add the eggs one at a time. And beat until combined. Gradually add sugar and beat until creamy. All right, so we got 16 ounces of cream cheese, softened. If they're not softened, don't worry. Um, they'll be fine. Just let them, either let them come to room temperature-ish. This is four hours worth of softening, so you can see this Philly cream cheese, four hours worth of softening. You can kind of see how soft it is. That's four hours worth. Let's get out in the morning because I knew I was going to do this today. Two eggs, a cup of sugar, a pint of sour cream, a dash, a dash of vanilla. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get out all the ingredients. You may have noticed from before I don't really do mise en place when I'm cooking for home. Uh, and you've never heard the term mise en place? I hadn't heard it either until I started doing this channel. It's kind of funny. People say mise en place. I'm like, oh, what's that? And there, huh, you got to take all the ingredients out, have all the measurements done first, then start the cooking process. Well, let's see. It said um, a pint, right? Uh, one pint, 16 ounces right there. This is why this is going to be a lighter one because we're using... 16 ounces of sour cream to 16 ounces of cream cheese. That's what makes it lighter. And fluffier and oh, so I mean you can actually have a whole slice and not feel full. Terribly full. There's the eggs. Let's get out the sugar. Let's get out the cup measurement. And let's get out the vanilla. By the way, um, if you think you have to use like the real vanilla for this, no. Uh, real vanilla is best if you're not cooking it, if you're not baking it. Once you bake the real vanilla, the fake vanilla is just as good. Just so you know. At least that's what I've been told by some vanilla expert. I think it was Minute Food. Love that channel. Shout out to Minute Food. You guys do a good job. Anyways, let's start. So yeah, the pie crust is there. It's in the refrigerator. It's going to be there for five minutes because it's going to take longer than five minutes to get the filling done. They're going to put this in the oven and then put it back in the refrigerator to cool it. And then we'll start on today's dinner. Tacos. And this is a new recipe. I've never done the tacos. The way I'm going to do the tacos today, I've never done it this way before. Never done it before this way. So I'm... Well, one of my ways I use ground beef is Lari seasoning. The Lari's taco seasoning. Whatever, you know, you get that taco seasoning and use that. That's one way to do it. Um, I've done that before. We like it. It's good. Once in a while. Today, though, what I'm doing is I'm taking thin steak. So not your best cut of steak. Not by any means. But as this kind of steak I often use for stir fry, the steak that Osman Gold uses... When he's making his steaks, you know, it's cheap steak, but it's better than ground beef. And usually ground beef actually is not necessarily cheaper than the cheap steak I'm using. Ground beef is expensive per pound. Oh, this cheap steak, he calls it a $2 steak. It's funny. I mean, it is the cheapest steak I can get. So we're going to be using that steak. And we are going to be, let's see, where's, where's the right, ah, there are the right ones. These are the correct ones. I go with this mixer. Not that it actually matters. 
doesn't truly matter. I've used mixers, uh, beaters. I've used ones that weren't for this one, but these are the ones that come with it. That's a nice low speed. All right, so just, I'm gonna remind myself what we do right here. Okay, we're going to beat until smooth. You're gonna add one egg at a time. Beat until smooth. See, this is a really slow speed. Look at how slow that is. I can go a little faster than that, I think. This is where having the cream cheese out for four hours. Let's see, it's at 11 on the clock, it's four now. That's about five hours. Really helps. See how smooth that cream cheese is. Nice low setting. Oh, that looks beautiful. All right, let's do one at a time. All right, now I'm not that much of a pro. I can't do this with one arm. But, you know, people always say, smash on the flat, smash on the flat, smash on the flat. So smash on the flat, your egg. I'll leave that over here. Right, why don't you do this? Boom, 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 boom. You know, one smack and then open. For me, that just, that just doesn't work. For some reason, I cannot do that knack very well. I probably have to have someone show me directly how to do it. If you want to show me. Wonderful. But I used to see on my countertop, I have a rounded edge. It's not a sharp edge, it's rounded. So I find that's much easier. One small tap there, and I don't get any egg inside eggshell, inside my mixture. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so again, we're gonna beat in one egg. There goes one egg. Nice and smooth and fluffy. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna need the zest of one lemon. Unfortunately, I have fresh lemons. Fresh lemons. Fresh, fresh, fresh. I just got the other egg in there. That looks pretty good. It's pretty nice. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna put it for that. That's what I'm doing here. And again, on the edge, see my edge is nice and rounded, so I just do one small tap, and usually gets a nice place for me to break my fingers in, and no egg shell gets into my dish. Boom. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about eggs is they always get the, no matter how you crack them, they always get on your, on your fingers. Second egg. Nicely beat that in there. So you're gonna notice, hopefully you notice, that as we do this cheesecake recipe, it really isn't that hard. It's not hard, it's not difficult. I mean, making this mixture, this is definitely like a level one. This is one of the first things I ever made, actually. I'm going to use this one again, probably. Scrape off the edges. We're going to wash the red spatula. Scrape down the edges. Uh, it's really not hard to make cheesecake. And to make it good, too. Especially this recipe. It's going to make it good. Now, I will tell you the history. One history behind this cheesecake recipe. So, back in, just out of college, back in the 90s, I had these group of friends, loved hanging out with them. We did a lot of stuff together. Always, uh, one of the one of the crew always wanted to go out and do stuff. So we kind of had a joke. Uh, once he became part of our, once he was you know, one of our friends, we would go and do stuff with him a lot. Our wallet to become lighter because we're always going out playing pool. Uh, going to restaurants, sushi restaurants, some good sushi restaurants in the Bay Area. Seto Sushi in the San Jose area was a really good sushi restaurant. How do we know? Because the Japanese expats would eat there. That's how we knew it was a good sushi restaurant. All right, good. That's nice and smooth. And now it goes in. It says... 
gradually add sugar and beat until creamy for one or two minutes. Okay, so we got a cup of sugar. I'm going to do it slowly. But anyway, so while I was in there, I was doing my cooking. It was when I first got my spaghetti recipe. One of my go-to dishes for myself as a bachelor. Dishes. Dishes is a dish. It's not a dish. This is what I used to do. I would buy uh, one of those loaves of sourdough bread. You know, Bay Area, you know. Sourdough. Mm, that's the thing. I would buy one of those sourdough breads. Sourdough. One of the big round ones. And what I do? I'll tell you. It's good. I would just buy that, and I'd buy some milk. That was back when I could handle drinking milk. And I would just um, eat that for dinner. That was one of my dinners that I went to. Another one, which I still love, but since my family doesn't, well, especially daughter doesn't like it so much, was ravioli. I would buy a frozen ravioli from the freezer, buy some jarred sauce. At that time, Classico was one of the good ones that I liked. I would probably change it now. I'd probably use Prego. But, you know, I used Classico, and then I changed, like, oh, it was, like, Four Brothers, I think it was. I can't remember the names of all the different different pasta styles down in time. Not Rouse. I know some of you out there, maybe, well, a lot of you from what I've seen on the Internet, love Rouse. I tried Rouse. Bought a thing from Costco because they had Rouse in a three-pack. First, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Rouse as pasta sauce. But anyway, so it was the easy thing. All you do is just heat up the water, put in the frozen dum oh, dumplings. <laughs> put in the frozen. That was another thing. It was dumplings. Put in the frozen ravioli. Let it get to the top. Add the sauce, and you're good to go. No, okay, well, there we go. Sugar's all in now. It's a cup of sugar. By the way, you notice I am not going to taste this. And there's one especially good reason why you don't want to taste it. It's the raw egg in there. Yeah. Now let's make that a little faster. Oh, look at that, though. Look at that creaminess. That creaminess, that smoothness. And one more thing's going in here. I'm sorry, more than one thing. Fairly creamy. Uh, let me get the lemon zest. So these lemons are from my mother's lemon tree. I wish our lemon tree was this good. I produce lemon, but it's not. But here we go. Nice lemon. Let's wash it off because we're going to be using the zest. So you want to make sure you have washed the zest. Clean off the zest, don't want any dirt from the zest winding up. And the cream cheese. The cream cheese. And your cheesecake. You definitely want to make dirt now. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so zest of one lemon. Now the more zest you put in, the more lemony it's gonna be, the less zest you put in, the less lemony it's gonna be. But that was actually the key. This recipe compared to in, in, in a, to the so let me go back to that story with my group of friends. I said I made a pretty good mean a pretty good cheesecake. I liked my cheesecake. I had a good recipe. And we're also friends with um, one of the chefs at the uh, the workplace's uh, what's that thing called? So the wor our workplace had a cafeteria for some time, and there was a chef there worked during the day. So I'm doing short strokes because I want small pieces of lemon zest, not huge pieces of lemon zest. And just the, just the zest, not the, uh, the white part. Do not put that white part in. That white part is sour. So, you know, I was saying, I'd make a good cheesecake. I'm not sure how it happened, but then the friend said, oh, why don't we have a cheesecake duel? This is before, this is like around the time of um, Iron Chef was big in Japan. Food Network wasn't a thing at this point. So you didn't have Iron Chef America yet. 
you didn't have like Bobby Flay. The only thing in America for cooking shows you had generally were, uh, what are those things? Like the uh, Yan Can Cook, the Frugal Gourmet. Those are some of the people that I watched. I'm not even sure if Rachel Ray was out yet. Hey, Emerald might have been starting to get popular. I don't remember though. Anyways, they're, they're, most of the cooking shows were on PBS too. As well as you just watch a guy cook and talk about cooking, kind of like you're doing right now. Except they were edited programs, whereas this is not edited. This is live. So anything you see is live. It shows you how long it takes to do something. Anyway. So what I was, uh, said I had a pretty good cheesecake. And then the chef said, you know, she has a good cheesecake too. So my friend said, oh, why don't we have cheesecake off? And, you know, that's not unheard, un unheard of. You know, they're like a chili cook-offs, things like that. So she made her cheesecake. I made my cheesecake. The one of the big differences that made this people like my cheeks better, cheesecake better, wasn't that it was light and fluffy, I'll tell you that. It was the lemon zest. It was the hint of lemon flavor in the cheesecake. So you want to up your cheesecake game, make your cheesecake taste a little better. Nice little lemon zest. No, it's not lemon juice, it's lemon zest. That was one of the things that set my cheesecake apart. For, I think it was like three friends. I, I think it was like two of them liked mine better, one liked hers better, something like that. So yeah, that was my uh, cheesecake uh, bake-off challenge. An actual chef. She learned with uh, Marriott, I think it was. Marriott Catering. But anyway. So there we go. So we have our zest inside. Now we got to put in our, whoops. My recipe shut off. Sour cream right next to sour cream. Add sour cream, lemon zest. Oh, vanilla too. And it says a dash of vanilla. Huh. Well, how about um, a half a teaspoon? of vanilla. We can do half a teaspoon of vanilla, yes. I think that'd be good. I might want some more though. But I do need the sour cream. Hold on. Let's get the sour cream in. And it says periodically scraped on the sides. So having the spatula out and doing its thing. It's not a bad thing for us. Yeah, the sour cream, the egg. So I'm kind of like a custard. So we're doing cheesecake. Award winning, okay, friend winning cheesecake. There's even like a, they even made a little trophy for the winner too, and I got to take the trophy home. Hmm. That was, that was a good time. Cheese cake. All those good times back when I lived in San Jose. Yes, that was good times. Bachelor life. It was a bachelor, you know, still, I mean, you heard. That's where I first got spaghetti recipe going. We still love our spaghetti recipe. And you've, uh, you know, bachelor don't usually do much cooking. I did enough. Once in a while, I, I was tired of like the, I rarely did, I rarely did the uh, frozen dinners. That just wasn't my thing. But I did do like the, the frozen ravioli. I didn't usually do spaghetti. I do frozen ravioli. I can't remember what I really cooked that much as a bachelor. But I do remember um, the ravioli and another frozen thing I did was the frozen dumplings. Go to a Chinese grocery store, buy a bag of frozen dumplings, boil them. Oh, there we go, sour cream. I'm going to use the whole thing too. Well, I'll just dig in, right? Uh, sour, let's see, dumplings. Boil them in the water, just like you boil the ravioli, really no different. Put it in, let it warm up. I usually dip it in the soy sauce, vinegar. The soy sauce, vinegar, hot sauce mixture. Oh, and sesame oil. That was the other thing, sesame oil. Love those dumplings too. Even though they're frozen, they're still good. Chinese dumplings. I, mean, I think I just like make sandwiches, you know, simple sandwiches. That chef also taught me something about it. Well, she did say it was actually the first time I introduced the idea. So growing up, or my sandwiches, my sandwiches were, uh, what were they? Sandwiches were 
slices of white bread, pre-sliced white bread. You would take pre-sliced white bread and you would uh, put whatever meats you want in it and basically that's kind of how you do it. No other way. All right, now we're gonna beat this so smooth, right? So it was white bread sandwiches we had. White bread. Whatever deli meats you could buy, and usually that meant I'd go into the deli section of the grocery store. Budding was a very common um, brand of meat. Oh, I guess pastrami or beef or turkey. I was a big turkey fan. Ham, my common ham and cheese. Easy ham and cheese sandwich. Now what do you do? But she taught me how, well, you don't have to use the white bread. She'd buy those, like the French loaf. And then on the French loaf, she would put the, on the French loaf, she would just, you know, cut it and put, and then make her sandwich out of that. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I mean, you don't have to use sandwich bread to make sandwiches. You can just cut bread. It's a new thing to me at the time. Something I don't know if I've ever thought of. One more, here we go. And the thing she liked, the chef liked in her sandwiches, she liked to do beef, and she liked to add the pickle relish. Ooh, it's actually pretty good. The pickle relish, why not? Once while I do some sort of sausage dish, and there's my spaghetti sausage, but there's also the Eckridge Farm sausage, the Hillshire Farm sausage, you know, the one that's already pre-cooked. And all you do is you just, um, it's pre-cooked. All you do is just stick it on the skillet, get it warm. And, you know, I kind of did some things my mom would do, like, um, cheeseburgers. I didn't have a grill at that time and that time. Then an apartment, no real grill to speak of. So didn't have that going for me, but yeah, so I didn't really cook steaks much back then. Nope. Not like now. Alright, let me read again. Uh-huh. That should be well mixed but not over beaten. what is over beaten anyway. All right, so that looks pretty well mixed. As you know, that's pretty well mixed. Okay. One of the things I like to do is to turn it on when it comes out of the sauce. All right, that's, okay. I think that's pretty good. We're going to now use a spatula to stir it up. Take the stuff off the sides and stir it up. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, looks like we're going to have to bake this for 45 minutes. While it's baking for 45 minutes, we are going to be making the tacos. Good tacos. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful tacos today. And if you're here, welcome, welcome. One thing I will say, you know, happy Martin Luther King Day tomorrow. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this today is because got, I got a day off tomorrow. Makes it easier. All right, let's take out our now refrigerated pie crusts, cheesecake crust. Yep, the butter is hardened up. We're good to go. It's hardened up quite a bit, actually. It's good. Um, yeah, let me see. See, I'm worried about this little spot right there. It's a little divot right there in the pie crust, a little divot. I'm worried about that spot. I have to get some crumbles over there. See, so technically what I should have done 
excuse me, little hiccup there. What I should have done before I put in the refrigerator was to double check to make sure it was the, the graham cracker crust, which is kind of insulating the pan from the cheesecake to make sure that it was high enough all around all the edges. All right, good enough. You'll see why when we start, when we cook it. So one of the tricks you do with your cheesecake, if you've never made it before, is when it uh, gets cooked, mostly, we're gonna use a spatula, no, a knife, sorry, not a spatula, a knife, and go around the edge so that it doesn't stick. So that it can come in, the cheesecake itself won't get those breaks inside is what that is for. Okay, but anyway, let's put in the cheesecake filling now. Let's move this over here. This wonderful cheesecake filling. It's gonna fill up. And we'll see if it goes over that one spot. A good spatula, like this one, well, you see, it cleans off all of the filling off the bowl. You know, why do you want any filling on the bowl? You don't. You want it all in there, right? Good thing about this cheesecake, too, since it's so thin. Okay, good, good. It's not gonna. Go over there. Okay, perfect. This is nice and thin. It's not hard to flatten it out. Okay, I'm gonna get as, as much as we can in there. Then we're gonna bake it. Looks like I said 45 minutes so I remember my recipe right. Now we'll get us started on dinner. Because you know, why would you have cheesecake? By the way, I did just look it up. 45 minutes, sorry, 45 minutes of baking. And if you read the recipe before, like me, four hours of cooling. If you're going to cool this thing for four hours, you're not waiting here for four hours for me to cool this thing. I, nobody's waiting for that. Nobody's waiting for that. I mean, if you want to see how it tastes, on my site, my Happy Healthy Wife site, I do have uh, one of my older, older videos. You'll have to excuse the uh, embarrassment I will have. If you watch it, <laughs> not really. Go ahead and watch my old videos. I made the cheesecake. And you can see my kids react to the flavors of it. So yeah, we're not gonna do a taste test here, but we are gonna make a beautiful cheesecake. Absolutely. Okay. Look at that, look at that beautiful. Nice and smooth out. Fairly well, okay. All right, there it is. The cheesecake. Recipe that won me a spatula against an actual trained chef. That's how you make it. We're pretty much done. All you gotta do now is put in the oven. It's gonna go 45 minutes, so it'll be done about Oh, five o'clock. Beautiful timing. Hopefully all the other food will be done very soon too. You know what? You're right. I forgot the vanilla. I just realized. There's no vanilla. Now then we'll save it. So make sure you add in half a teaspoon of vanilla. Putting it in now would not be any good. I have to mix it all up and that's not gonna work very well. I've done the mixing, the mixing's done. I can't really undo the mixing. I mean, I can't really, let me back it up. I, can, I can't undo the pouring into the pie pan because the graham cracker crust is there. If I try and mix the vanilla now, it's not gonna mix in properly, so just don't bother, it's done. No vanilla. No vanilla for us today. Mm. Will that hurt it? Maybe. And again, let me look at my recipe. Let me clean off the apron a bit. Definitely going to wash. All right, here we go. There we go. Wash. There we go. Bake for 45 minutes. These eggs should still jiggle. Be careful not to overcook. 
Let it cool in the pan. 10 minutes, I'm sorry, I should say 10 minutes. Two minutes. I have to, I'm gonna set out this recipe. That was just bad. Let it cool in the pan 10 minutes. Using a knife, separate the edge of the crusts from the spring form pan. This will help the cracks before we add the cheesecake. Let it cool for another 20 minutes. Chill in the refrigerator, loosely covered for at least four hours. Unmold and transfer to a cake plate. All right, well, let's do the cooking. Woo, almost, uh, okay. 45 minutes, it says. Then we'll see how much it jiggles. If it, doesn't, if it jiggles too much, we'll have to redo it. I mean, we'll have to let it cook longer. So there it goes. Set the 45 minute timer, 325, it's in the oven. It is cooking slowly, because that's how cheesecake cooks. All right, not gonna need this again. Sugar's done for today. That's enough sugar, a whole cup of sugar, that's enough sugar. Let me get some water. A little bit more. There we go. All right, it's taco time. I'm gonna repurpose that for tacos. Hold on. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, okay. Just a funny, I'm just sorry. I want to give a funny comment to <clears throat> my colleague, Dior Jones. Hold on, I'll be back. I need the steak. Where's the other one? Oh, there's the other one. Here's the other one. Alrighto. All right, so what I got here, I got some cheap beef. Cheap beef, cheap beef. So what I do, let's see, what is it? It was uh, called round tip steak. Cut really thin. Figured I, huh, let me use this. So what I do is I buy a whole bunch of them when they're on sale. This is like $5 a pound, I think it was, on sale. So that's a good price in my area. $5 a pound for this steak is kind of cheap. Um, if we want to get a, a steak for the grill, $8 a pound is my cheapest. That's when it's on sale. And that would be usually a bone-in ribeye or bone-in New York strip. Those are the steaks you get. But this I can get for, I think it is $5 a pound. Round tip steak. So the cheapest steak I get. And we're gonna use this meat and turn it into tacos. Now usually I only do one pound, but today we got my son. And my brother's coming over. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, yeah, da, 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 da. we're going to marinate this and cook it on the skillet. And this will be the meat for the tacos. You guys get all the other stuff for the tacos too. Now, when I usually do the ground beef tacos, the meat sits there and stews, 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 stews in the sauces, and you get all the other stuff right at the same time. This time though, I think we get everything else ready first. 
And then we're going to finish. Well, actually, I think I'm going to marinate the steak first. And to do so, because this is a flat steak, let's actually marinate it. Oh, I can't marinate it in that. Oh, yeah, I can. It got rinsed. It got washed. It's fine. It should be perfect for this in a casserole dish. I thought we'd take away the mixer. Don't need the mixer now. So, you know, one of the reasons why I'm doing something besides cheesecake, of course, is because <laughs> what else would you be doing now? Hmm, where are you? Hmm, where indeed? Where indeed did it go? Well, let me just double check here. Where I normally find it? Nope. Nope, nope. Let me check here. This is the other place I should expect to find it. It is in there. I just couldn't see it because it was dark. All right. Yeah. Washed out a bit. Something's going on the Dallas game, don't know what it is, but apparently something's going on. I saw it was 27 to 7 and a half, but I guess we'll find out the real live score later. Anyways. Yeah, but I need this. I need that tray too, a little bit. So this is where we're gonna marinate the beef. So we're gonna put together. And you have the recipe. A marinade that I use for fajitas. So you use that same marinade for just make the beef tacos. And you know, why not? This is something I've never done before, never done it this way. I've done fajitas before. I have done ground beef tacos before. I have not ever done carne asada. That's not something I've ever done. So I say, you know, hey, my kids like the flavor of the beef and the beef fajitas. They hate the pepper in it, though, so that's why we don't make fajitas very often. My wife and I love it. So once the kids leave, we'll be having fajitas more often because we like it. With the bell pepper and the onion grilled. Oh, so good. So tasty. Home version. Don't have to do this. Oh my gosh, 20 bucks. 20, I'm serious, 20 bucks at the restaurant for beef fajitas for two. 20, 25 bucks, at least that's our prices here. You know how much this would cost me? Six bucks for this right here. A pound of beef, plenty for me and my wife. Six bucks. Plus the condiments. You know, I mean, that's like four times the price what I can do at home. But it's also why my family says, you know, we can't really eat at those steak places anymore. Because your homemade barbecue steaks taste better. That's right. So, you know, if you want to save money on steaks, and I'll tell you, you learn to cook steaks. Learn. It's not that hard. Uh, there are lots of videos online. Just try. Just start experimenting. It's going to be cheaper than going to Outback, than going to Texas Roadhouse, than going to Golden Corral. Make your steaks at home, my friends. Make your steaks at home. Even if you don't have a barbecue, you, doesn't, you don't have to have a barbecue to make a good steak. You can even do it in a non-stick skillet, though. I, I'd recommend not using a non-stick skillet. But you don't even need to use high-quality equipment. You could even broil the steak, and it's going to taste better. Now, you can't microwave it. No, 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 you can't microwave it. You could broil the steaks, and it, you can make it taste better than you get at a restaurant. Anyway, so, so this is what should have happened last time with the mixer. And see how I am cleaning it off so that when I put it back in, it'll be clean the next time it comes out. 
for the mashed potatoes that Happy Healthy Daughter always makes. Wonderful mashed potatoes. That's the main use of this mixer, the mashed potatoes. Okay. There it goes, goes back, cleaned. That's what should happen. All right. so, you know, learn how to make steaks. It's not that hard. They're not hard to make, they're not hard to make good. Learn the timing, learn the seasoning you like, and make the stuff at home. Save yourself a bundle of money and enjoy. A much cheaper, maybe you know, maybe you don't have the budget for steak though. Maybe you don't think you have the budget for steak. No, but I am serious. If you want to save money and eat well, and like I said, I can get bone and ribeye, eight dollars a pound. Eight dollars a pound for a bone and ribeye. So think about this. You go to the steakhouse, and how much do they give you? You might get an eight ounce steak. That's half a pound. It's four dollars for a steak. Man, I can go to Carl's Jr. and I can't even pay four dollars for my steak. Can't pay that. Huh, for my burger, sorry. Carl's Jr. You can't even get a four dollar burger, Carl's Jr. It just doesn't exist. So advice to you, learn how to make steak. Learn how to make steak. Watch videos, there's so many videos online. Google, great resource. My videos, great resource on steaks. I'm not as much on steaks though. I have some select steaks that you can see. Tri-tip is good, my tri-tip. Tri-tip's another one. Five dollars a pound tri-tip. Learn how to cook it. It's one of the easiest steaks to cook. You just have to slice a lot of it. That's the only problem, you have to slice it. But you know, three pound tri-tip, $12. Okay, maybe $15. For a three pound tri-tip, $15, cook it. That's gonna feed you and your family, unless you have a teenage son like I do, and then you need a second one. For leftovers too, you know, but yeah. I mean, just it'll feed your whole family for one night, a nice meal. Tri-tip, $12. Why go to a steakhouse and pay 20 bucks for that top sirloin, that eight ounce top sirloin, when you can feed your whole family for less? It's just, just my thing, you know? Learn how to make steak. Learn how to make steak, okay. Where was I going? I was going to the recipes, down here to the uh, taco meat. It's funny. Taco meat, one pound of beef, okay. Half a red onion, diced. Now, I was gonna, oh, that's right, I gotta do the marinade. I was gonna do the salsa. I bet I made salsa on Thursday. I was gonna make it again today for you, but I've done pico de gallo for you before. Because uh, today I will show you. So I, I look at this and I see he's diced something. Uh, I'm actually just going to slice it. Not because I'm lazy, but I preferred sliced onion. Oops. So we're going to do sliced onion. Because you can actually cook that in the stick and it, it, it'll, it'll be nice. So I was going to do half of this red onion right here. Oh, wait. Never mind, I have half a red onion in the refrigerator now. So I made sauce the other day. Oh good, I still have some. Thursday actually, Thursday, two, uh, three days ago, we made some salsa. Pico de gallo, fresh salsa, red onion, tomato. I'm gonna take a smell. Smell is still good, let's mix it up. So I was gonna make some salsa today. Ah, uh, this is still good. I don't need to make salsa. Had some limes in there. Now we actually have a good lime tree. So I have some good limes. But this is still good. Now you can't let your salsa wait too long. You know, because uh, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables do go bad. But it's still, I think, in the realm of good. So we're going to use this. It's also from Thursday. It's still fine. It still smells good. And it still looks good. It's been in the refrigerator since Thursday. It's good. It's good salsa. Hasn't gone bad yet. No mold in there. Here's the other half of onion. From that salsa. It still looks fine. It looks fine. Doesn't look too bad. Looks fine. It'll work. So let me see. We got the pound. Well, actually, it's um, it's actually two pounds, but. I digress. 
Alright, so now I'm going to use the knife that my wife, I think that's the one, is it in there? Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't tested on a new knife. It's really heavy. It is really heavy. It's done good on beef. What it hasn't done good on, though, is vegetables for me. Anyway, uh, see, it just slides right off. All right, let's, um, let's see which side. I need to cut this side first. There we go. So that I can peel off this outer layer. I usually take one layer along with the outer layer of onion just because. And also, don't worry about this onion being a little older, three days after cut, because it's already, it's going to be cooked. Don't worry about it, it'll be cooked. It'll be fine. When veggies are a little older, just cook them. You just can't eat them fresh. <laughs> it reminds me of the saying the Chinese have is about us Americans. They don't like your vegetables. Why? Because we either undercook them or we overcook them. It's kind of true. All right, cutting up an onion. One on one, just for slices. Now I'm see this knife doesn't cut the way I want it to cut. There we go. But I'll cut off the top anyway. Close enough. Nice cut right through it. Boom. Now I'm not going to do the slices that are, um, you know, that curl. If you cut it this way, you're going to get curled slices. I'm going to cut it to make excuse me, straight slices. So I cut off the edge first, and then boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. We just cut down, make some nice slices. We're using red onions. Usually I use yellow, because I had half a red onion left from Thursday, so we're gonna use this one. And now keep this big part and just go straight down. Straight down. Okay, slices. See, it doesn't just so that I don't know why I'm not using this knife correctly. It just doesn't work well for me. My other one that I have that if you look at my in the description down below, there's a link to it. Very good chef's knife. Wonderful. I love it. Just want to use this one for a bit. And this was actually supposedly I've done with works good with meat. It is definitely a meat cleaverish. Doesn't really do well with vegetables for some strange reason. I don't know why. Anyway, so keep cutting, slicing it down, slicing down. There we go. Onion sliced. Beautiful. Half an onion. In it goes. All right, let's get all the other ingredients to marinate our steak. Now, let's see, I modified this recipe. I thought the one I saw online was a little too much. Um, quarter cup of olive oil. Sounds pretty good to me. Quarter cup. Hmm. I think I have a quarter cup in this bottle. If not, I have the whole thing. And maybe, maybe you'll see me fill up this bottle today. We'll see. Quarter cup. Quarter cup of oil, olive, oil, there it goes, beautiful. So I modified the recipe that I actually have that I first got this from. It just seemed like too much. Everything was doubled, so I halved everything. But since I'm doing twice as much meat, maybe I should double everything again. I'll be honest, with you, the rest of it was for two pounds of meat. Well, we'll see. I think, I think it should be fine. Three tablespoons red wine vinegar. Red wine vinegar is a secret of the gods, by the way. If you never added red wine vinegar to your foods, your vegetables, you should try it. It's actually pretty good. Three tablespoons. Let's take out the tablespoon marker. Here we go. Three tables. Now, actually, I'll be honest with you, when I'm usually doing this for myself, I don't usually measure this detailed. But today, I'm going detailed measurings. All right, so we got three tablespoons there. What else do we need? Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. All right, half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. Do, 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 do. 
And then we're about to get our hands really dirty. <laughs> Half teaspoon of salt. There we go. Here's that teaspoon of salt. Uh, we'll measure it at about half teaspoon of pepper. They don't have, it's hard to do this with this. It goes everywhere. Uh, okay. That's about it. And there's still more in there. Don't worry about that. What else goes in? Let's see. A tablespoon of lime juice. Okay, so I do actually have a lime, but because, and I actually really cut down the amount of lime oh, juice that's supposed to be in here. Because I have a fresh lemon that's already been, um, what do we call that? Zested. We just want to use that. And it's a tablespoon, okay. Tablespoon, let's squeeze in a tablespoon. seed out of there. See, it's not going to matter that much. The original recipe had two-thirds a cup that I saw. I was like, That's just too much lime juice. I, mean, I love lime. Lime juice is great. I would be using lime here if I didn't have the lemon pre-grated, pre-zested. There we go. Some lemon juice inside, there we go. I think I want a little more on that. And three garlic cloves, sounds good. A little more lemon juice. Ah, uh, seed fell in. I didn't get the full teaspoon, so that's why. I had some more. Do you know how hard it is to get that much lime juice? How many limes it takes? How much lime juice? I thought it was too much. Anyway. All right, now we got that in there. What's next? What you dare? Garlic clips. Three of them. Got 25 minutes left of the cheesecake. Just so you know. Three of them. Okay, perfect. This will work. All right, we'll do them all. Do. Ba da da ba da ba. Smashed. That's my easy way to peel them, by the way. I hate peeling them. That's how I peel them. I smash them so that the peel comes off easily. Well, we're not going to cut the beef until after it's cooked, just so you know. And then we're going to cut up the beef when it's cooked. Just going to marry the babies in there, straight up. We'll get everything else ready, though, first. It's not that much to get ready, actually. But there is one thing very special to get ready. So first, we're going to marinate. Then we're going to, yeah, we got to have all right, my standards, hot sauce. Um, salsa, I showed you the salsa. We're hot sauce, salsa, have some sour cream. I got some more sour cream in there. Um, cheese, that'll be easy. Grate some cheese. We'll grate up some, we're, we're gonna use Colby Jack. I know cheddar is a very common one, we use Colby Jack usually. Some nice cheese. Americans like cheddar. I like it at Colby Jack. We're gonna have some cheese. There we go. Uh, sour cream, lettuce. Oh, yes, that's right. I gotta get some lettuce ready, too. Get some lettuce ready. So, we gotta get everything else ready, too, for the tacos. But first, marinate the beef, because that's the one that takes the longest. There we are. And I like to use a cheese grater for this part. More of that. So we're going to use our cheese grater right here. 
Go straight into it. Big fan of garlic flavor. And use some cumin. So one of the things my mom did a lot of was make tacos. Actually, it was every, let's see, every Monday. Wow, every Monday was taco night. So every Monday, she would brown up the ground beef, add the lorry seasoning. She would chop up some lettuce, dice some tomatoes. Um, my dad used La Victoria Salsa Brava. She would get jalapenos, dice up some onions. Grate up the cheese. One of the common things is after you grate up the cheese, like I would snack on the cheese, just sit there and take some of the cheddar cheese and eat it straight. So it's always like a mouse got in the cheese. Mouse got in the cheese. And that was me. I was the mouse who got the cheese. So yeah, that's that was the toppings for the tacos. Sour cream too, so. She didn't do the guacamole like I'm gonna do. So that was taco night. Like every Monday. Honestly, I kind of got tired of every Monday being taco night. Uh, one teaspoon of cilantro. Cilantro. Teaspoon of cumin. Yeah, cumin. Let's get some cumin in there. Ah, uh, here's the cumin. We love, we use a lot of cumin. Another good use for cumin is lamb. Lamb's a really good use for cumin. Oh, that's a table, half a tablespoon. No, no, no. Let me have a tablespoon. A teaspoon, there we go. A teaspoon of cumin. It's a good flavoring for steak. Cumin. And lamb. Very good flavoring for lamb. All right, let's get a teaspoon in there. Whew. Oh, yeah, the cumin smell. That's a good smell. Okay. And I might end up doing some more of this stuff. But... And a half a cup of chopped up cilantro. So let's get some cilantro. Chop it up and put it inside. Half a cup. So I'm just going to break off some. There we go. Half a cup of cilantro, I'm gonna wash it over here. Oh, good, the clouds are muting our sunset, so you don't see the bright yellow sun breaking in today. But the sun is setting. All right, the thing about cilantro is, you definitely wanna get the flavor out. And to do so, you do wanna break it up a bit. So. My secret weapon over here? Where is my secret cilantro weapon? No. Is it in here? No. Must be the dishwasher. What does that mean? It means it was, well, it wasn't, it was rinsed. I'll just put it that way. It was rinsed. It was used for something and then we rinsed it off. There they are. So I'll actually wash them. There we go. Okay, cilantro. Plus, we're not going to eat this raw. It's going to be cooked. So a cute way, a cute way, a nice way to release the cilantro flavor is just to cut them up. And you could buy shears specifically for cutting herbs. Do it differently than this, but not worth it. You could knife them, but I'd rather get as much in the bowl as I can and not put them on the cutting board because that's what happens to cilantro and other herbs when you chop them up with a knife you get a lot on the cutting board and not as much in the marinade it's hard to get them off the cutting board there we go chop 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 there we go nice chopped cilantro so we can release 
It's cilantro-ness into the marinade. Better than if we didn't. Okay. So there's the marinade. Let's uh, start around. Let me see. Do we need any measurements for anything else? Nope. So we can use one of these. Let's use this one. Kind of mix stuff up a bit. And we're going to put beef inside. I might end up adding more oil. Oh, the flavors of this marinade just smell wonderful. Mm -mm -mm. And the reason why I'm putting this flat place is because oh, I need to cut this too. Do, 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 do. Because the beef is flapped and thin. Wonderful flat, thin beef. All right. So if I was just doing one pound, if I was doing only one pound of this stuff, I think this would probably be, oh yeah, plenty of marinade for this one pound, right? It'll be fine for two pounds too. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Uh, and get the other one. Mm. Oh, I can smell the cheesecake, by the way. Mm. What I'm really smelling, though, is the graham cracker cinnamon crust. So what's going to happen is we're going to cook the beef as is from the marinade. And then we're going to cut it up. Slice it up. Now we the beef that we'll put on our tacos. I also get the taco shells ready. The taco shells are gonna be like near the end. Don't do that yet. All right, so let's get the beef inside the marinade. And let's get that marinating while we go on to the next step. Yeah, that's actually plenty of marinade, I'll say. It is. Mmm. This flavor is mixing with the beef. That is a wonderful smell. What do you mean we're going to cut after? It's easier to cut once it's cooked. Oh, wonderful smell. I'll put it flat in there and let those flavors mix. As flat as I can, I should say. Uh, that actually was a good amount, even for two pounds. Good amount of marinade. If you want to dull on marinade for two pounds, feel free. But I think this is going to, oh yes, this is going to be a good complement beef to our tacos. Well, again, I researched fajita marinades on the internet a long time ago. This is way back. Found one that I liked. Oh, it looks pretty good. Modified slightly to our tastes. Now we're using it. Like I said. Oh, mm, that's lovely. That is lovely. Okay. Slightly wash off my hands, then we'll start on the condiments for the tacos. And the first condiment we usually do, I usually get ready, are the ones that are supposed to have their flavors just sit for a while. Just sit for a while. Such as guacamole or salsa. Those are two. Since I already have the salsa ready to go, we're not going to do the salsa today. Let's take a quick peek. Okay, it's looking pretty good. We'll do the shake test in a bit. See if it's Solid enough. That's one thing you gotta worry about. Not solid enough. I'm gonna put the beef up here. Yeah, you can still see it marinating right there. Okay, perfect. There you go. Put the beef right there for you. Beef is good. Let's get the guacamole going. And put away the spices. Let's put away the spices first. 
I don't need any measurement cups for anything else. We're measured up. All the measurements done. Get the measurements ready to be washed. Then use a half a tablespoon once we'll put that back. Uh, a lemon. This one's been lemoned up. The other half, well, the other half, what's gonna happen is happy, healthy wife can use that for her tea. Put some lemon in her tea, so we'll set that aside. Take a slice of it, put it right in her tea. Let's put the uh, ingredients back. Uh, uh, yeah, the unfortunate the vanilla, I know. It's not gonna make or break the cheesecake, trust me. Oh, and that reminds me, if you wanted, if you are so inclined to make a wonderful topping for your cheesecake, I will tell you, the ravage one is very sweet. You might cut the sugar. But I do have links to two really good sauces to put on your cheesecake. There's a blueberry one, there's a raspberry one. The blueberry one, you could actually use the lemon juice from the lemon that we cut to put in that. Because you want it a little bit tart, and that adds a beautiful tartness because you know the cheesecake itself is going to be very, very sweet, all that sugar inside. So I would recommend, absolutely recommend, making those toppings if you want the topping. Now I still have some raspberry topping from the last time we made it. Back, let me, I'll bring it out. I think it was for New Year. So I still got some raspberry topping. Let's make sure it's still good for the cheesecake. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it might not be good anymore. Problem with the raspberry topping, you can see, I'll get really close in there. This part there is a little moldy. Oops, uh, there we go. Yeah, a little moldy. Yeah, you can smell it. So that's not good anymore. We're gonna set that aside. But a wonderful raspberry topping, it tastes wonderful. And we also have a nice blueberry topping, links on how to do those below. Don't need the salt. Either. So we'll put all those away, get ready for the next thing on the list. And my next thing is guacamole. Guacamole, guacamole. Let's see. Dips, hollandaise, au jus, Southwest ranch dip. Oh, I hope I do have one. Oh. Hollandaise, oh. Looks like I used up all my guacamole mixes. Ha ha, so we're going to improvise. All right. Sorry, wifey. No lemon for you, because we got to make guacamole. Fortunately, I do have a guacamole recipe. I'm not really going to follow the exact one that I have there, but it's going to... Definitely use some spices. Go to Happy Healthy Wife and look at guacamole. Whoops. Do, do, do. Search guacamole. Oops. Guacamole and search for it. This is the one I'm going to be using. Boom. All right, so we got half of a lime. Ha ha ha. We're going to use half of a lemon. We're gonna use some salt and cumin and cayenne and no onion. And we use garlic powder too, not whole garlic. And hmm, maybe some cilantro. But anyway, I do got some guacamole recipe online, happyhealthywife.net. So I'm gonna be following that recipe. I was supposed to have a package of guacamole. I was supposed to have a package. I didn't check and I didn't buy one. So we're gonna do a curveball. Usually, my fam prefers the packaged guacamole, but since I don't have it, we're just going to, uh, sorry, a little sorry. We're just going with a version based on Alton Brown. And you're gonna see I'm gonna modify it right here. I'm not gonna do exactly what it says in the recipe. We're not using, well, we might use cilantro. We are gonna use cumin. Cumin's a big one. Salt's a big one. 
put in our guacamole and we'll taste as we go because that's how we do things around here. Woo! Yeah, I almost dropped the knife. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And we can take that seed out. That seed is actually coming out really easy. There we go. Some nice green avocado. Nice avocado. Do, 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 do. So if you never cut an avocado before, you cut from the top down to the seed. Boom. You twist to take it apart. And some way, shape, or form, you take out the seed. Sometimes. You can just smash it with the knife. Sometimes it didn't really work for well, did it? You can use your thumbs and push it out. There are many ways to do it. We took it out. Now I need a small bowl. Small bowl. Personally, my kids like the version of guacamole where I use the beater. We're not beating this guacamole today, though. We're going to fork slice it. Oh, we're also going to, we're going to fork smash fork smash, fork mash it. And we're gonna, I like to spoon it out because I'm lazy. Not so lazy much as, uh, it's just better. Uh-oh. This one feels a little solid. And we take out all the guacamole with a spoon because I don't want to get my hands messy. You want it to be soft. The softer it is, easier just to mash. I'll be mashing a little which is often why the kids like the uh, blender version. Use a hand mixer. A little softer. Boom. Ooh. Oh, my laptop's getting hot. It just doesn't happen. I hear you, laptop. I hear you. Boom. There it goes. And in we go. There goes all the. And I'll use the spoon later. Not off oh, for stirring. We gotta mash first. You have to mash it up. Then you put in the spices and you mash and you mix them in. Mash the fork. Is usually how it goes. But my kids prefer like a really smooth avocado. So sometimes when I'm doing it for them, actually most of the time. I won't use the fork mash method. I will use a blender. And if you really want to use a blender, it's going to make your guacamole really smooth. But happy ugly wife and I don't need the blender. We just like the texture. You know, fork smashed is fine. Some people will mortal and pestle it to death. That'll work too. If I had a mortar, I could use that, right? More and a pestle. If I had a pestle right now, I could use the pestle and just smash it. Get it nice and smashed up. Get nice, good consistency. I'm only using two avocados. I don't know if it said three. I'm only using two. I have more. The others are something else. Therefore, another dish that I love to make, that we like to make some days, a nice vegetarian dish which is avocado egg sandwich. It's coming up later this week. So about small cows now. Avocados are on sale today. Oh, by the way, Super Bowl's coming up. And with a Super Bowl, if you're having a Super Bowl party, one of the common things people like to have in a Super Bowl party is guacamole. I don't know why, it just is. So we're gonna get some lemon juice in here. And I know it's supposed to be lime juice, but today we're a lemon family because I'm using lemon for the cheesecake. So one reason why I'm using my hand here is to block the seeds from coming out. Got that seed. So you don't want seeds in here. Okay. Tailspoon, that's, that's more than a tailspoon. Okay, so there we go. There we go, so we use all of our juice, our lemon juice is all done. Wash off my hand again. All right, I need some salt in here. And then of course, before we finish with the guacamole, we always have to taste test it. And I get back and get some salt. Let's get some salt. 
Salt, salt, salt. And cumin. And let's get some hot spice there. I'm actually gonna use Kashmiri pepper. Now I'd ask for cayenne, but I have found a really hot Kashmiri pepper. Well, spice. It was at a Middle Eastern Indian place. Can't remember, oh, which one do I need? Half a teaspoon, okay. Unfortunately, already half a teaspoon away. So we'll rinse it out, good enough. And half a teaspoon our way into the, dry it up so that it doesn't get stuck. Half a teaspoon our salt and our cumin. And then taste, if it's not the way we like it, we'll change it. Oh, look at that, listen to that. All right, there's a half teaspoon of salt. Half teaspoon of cumin. Does eat two avocados. I hear it, I hear you, I hear you, I'm a coming. Half teaspoon of cumin, beautiful. Quarter tea, wow, that's a lot of cayenne. Oh, <laughs> you do not want a quarter teaspoon of this cash. This is hot stuff. We're just gonna shake some in there. Shake a little, it's a dash. This is, that's plenty. That's gonna be spice, trust me. We've had that before. Cayenne, no onion, garlic. We use garlic powder. We will really use cilantro though. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. I'll even let you see it. Okay. I'm gonna show you the jiggle. You can see the top. The top's a little, okay. Jiggling a little, pretty good. Maybe a little too much jiggle in there. It's gonna firm up when we refrigerate it. It will. A little too much jiggle. We're gonna keep it there for another uh, five, 10 minutes. We'll do 10. And then it should be good. Should be fine. A little bit of a jiggle. We we'll want a little less jiggle. A little bit of knife on the edge. Okay, let me see. Let's mix this in. What did I say? I need some cilantro. Okay, the scissors again, right? Scissor up that cilantro. All right, so grab some cilantro. Which is good. A little bit of cilantro. Which is fine. We'll scissor it in. A little bit of cilantro. Scissor in. I guess by now the Cowboys game is over. I do not know the results. I'm not going to look it up for you. You can look it up. Okay, gonna cut it in, cut in some cilantro. We love our cilantro, it tastes really good. Cut in some more veggies. Okay. Why do we cut the cilantro? Again, it's so that, and so it's smaller, which is good, but also releases flavor. Because herbs often, if you just, unless you actually bite into the herb itself, it's not going to release flavor unless it's been cut by their herbs. So we're going to put in some fresh cilantro. It seems like quite a bit, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay. There you go, a bit of cilantro in there. A little more than my recipe calls for, that's okay. We like cilantro. We are a cilantro forward family. Doesn't taste like salt in our palates. Okay, so we got the lemon juice. Really gonna shut off again on me? Okay, fine. Garlic, oh, that's right. I was gonna do the garlic substitute. I and mean, honestly, I do bet fresh garlic would taste better in this. Fine, one clove of garlic. One clove, not three. Three is a lot. Dang. Let's do one clove. Not three. We're gonna do one clove of garlic. One clove. Like one punch? No. One clove of garlic. I mean, it's just gonna taste better with fresh garlic. I mean, I could do the powdery stuff, 
But when doing a fresh dish, if we're not cooking, then if we're not gonna cook it, it's better not to have the powder in your mouth. So I'm gonna go, all right, one clove. One clove of garlic right here. And in. So I like to use the knife there to smash it down, if you didn't see that. You take the garlic clove, clove of garlic, you take a knife, smash it down. I'm gonna move this down even more for now. And there we go, break it open. But I do not like chunks of garlic in anything I make. Don't want chunks. So we grate. garlic. And I'm expecting this guacamole to be nice and good. You know, I did see recently, and I want to try it sometime, Raul, of uh, Epicurious showed how to make fresh guacamole, and it looked really good. So I do want to try that one, but that's not today. This is Alton Brown's version from Food Network, but modified. It's a simpler version. Rule's version is good, but it's, uh, let me be honest, it's gonna take a long time to make that. All right, some fresh garlic, there we go. One is plenty. One is plenty. Depending on if you love garlic, maybe you do more. I'm just doing one. Okay. So usually I like to stir it up. That was for the mashing, but now with the stirring, we're gonna use a spoon. Couple reasons. All right, so guacamole is done. Sauce is done. Guac is done. Guac is done. Although the guac is not done, why not? I'll tell you honestly. This guacamole is not finished until you do the obvious. Take out a chip and taste it. A little bit of all the flavors. All right, let's see. Alton Brown version, let's try it. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, I got the salt. Great chip too. Mmm. Mmm, very flavorful. Very flavor, oh, that is nice. Nice little bit of garlic, not much garlic, but Got the salt, got the cumin in there. That, you know, let's taste it without the chip. So it's less than, um, because the chip has salt on it, and that really changes things. Let's try this. Oh, nice and fresh. Little tang from that lemon juice. It's, it's, it is good guacamole. In the refrigerator it goes. Now, if it was gonna be in there for a long time, I would cover it. It's not. I'm just gonna put it in. I don't know what that is. Put in the guac. Okay, the guac is good. I need some lettuce. The taco. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy a head of lettuce just for this purpose. Lettuce for the taco. Now the trick is, how do you wash it? Well, we're going to use a salad spinner. This is my favorite way to do it. We also need some cheese, so we got the guac. We got the, we need some cheese. Here comes some, we got the, we need the lettuce. My favorite way, and I don't know if I have, I have not, I know I haven't reviewed one of these before, but this is a godsend. If you like your lettuce, Huh. I don't see the health on there anywhere. Mm. Oh well. If you like 
to wash your vegetables, like the cabbage, the lettuce. Now we're doing a lot. Why? Because it's tacos, but for other people, they make it a taco salad. And they use the chips, and it's, it's really nice, actually, to be able to do that. So, and if you want your lettuce washed and clean, get one of these. And I'm going to shred it like grandma would, like my mom would. I'm going to shred the lettuce. So that's the kind of lettuce you want on a taco. You don't want big chunks. So we're going to shred. It's not very hard to shred lettuce, actually. It's very easy, in fact. Here you go. I'll show it to you. It's not hard. All right, so you're going to cut the lettuce. All right, so especially the head. You're going to cut it right here. Boom. No, no. Wait. Cut it right here. Boom. And then chop it like this, I think, is the way I do it. Or do I cut it like this and do it like this? Okay, never mind. I cut it across. Across. Boom. And then we cut it this way. You don't want huge, long shreds. You just want shreds. I don't want to be long too much. There we go. Just like Grandma used to do. Iceberg lettuce, I feel, is the best lettuce for tacos. Boom. Shredded lettuce. No fancy machinery needed. Oh, look, I didn't do any fancy machinery today. So unlikely not to use the full-star vegetable chopper, huh? But I wasn't dicing anything, right? I didn't dice any lettuce. I didn't dice any onions. I did slices. And using one knife. All right, lots of lettuce. This will be good for salad for those of us who want to do the salad thing. So I tell you, you really need half of the head right there. So I see that red stuff, that brown stuff. Take that out. Don't want brown stuff in your lettuce. And if you're, you know, picking out lettuce for your taco and you see some brown stuff, just take it out. Oh, you know what? That should be good enough, I think. With a cheesecake, let's bring it out again. And then do our special next step for it. All right, yeah, yeah, guacamole. Ah, here we are. Ah, let's take it off. Off the top, the beeper. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. All right, you can see it's drilling less. You don't want to do too much more than that, otherwise it's going to brown up. You don't want to really jiggle it too much. It's going to see those, those rips. Those rips get more. So that was actually 55 minutes. Uh, we're going to leave the oven on because I have to heat up some tortillas. All right, now to stop, it's going to shrink. And to stop those rips from getting any bigger, here's the trick. Take a knife. Go around on the inside. Around all around on the inside. It's going to separate the graham cracker from the edge of the pie tin. Which is going to allow the cake to go inside. Allow it to stretch. There you go. All right, it's beautiful. And I wanted to be very professional. I could take off all the little crumbs that fell in. I could cut off all the crumbs on the edge. We're not being professional here. We're being a home cook. Imperfection are special. So now, what do we say? We say 10 minutes, right? Baking. All right, let's see. Um, but, um, Well, I was supposed to let it cool 10 minutes before doing that. It's okay. It's done. What's well, done is done. So we're going to let it rest for 30 outside. So we're letting it rest out here for 30 minutes. And when we're done with that 30 minutes, that's so everything I think I did. It's going go in the refrigerator for four hours or overnight. Overnight's fine. Just let it sit in the refrigerator. 
So no, the yeah, cheesecake will not be eaten today, it'll be eaten later. Tomorrow. So if you're making cheesecake for a dinner, not for dinner, for a party or whatever you're making cheesecake for, make sure you make it the day before. Because it takes a long time to, to cool and rest. So what we did was uh, my, my competition, we cooked it during the day. The two of us, we cooked our cheesecakes during the day. And yeah, actually the chef decorated both of them to look the same, so that they couldn't tell by looking who's was who's. And then, you know, we had dinner. She cooked a fabulous dinner. I'm sure that's what it was. I can't be for certain, that's what I think I remember though. And if that wasn't, that's what I say happened. She cooked a dinner, we had a wonderful dinner. But I was there like in the morning, on Saturday morning. And we cooked cheesecake together. And then we put it in the refrigerator and let it cool. And then, after the dinner, they had the cheesecake testing, taste test. The cheesecake off. And everybody had, all three other people had some. It was just five of us that day. It's a good time. Good, good time. Boom. All right, so we got our beautiful lettuce ready to wash. So what we do is we're going to fill it with water. Pull this out. The water will remain in the bottom part. We'll dump that water out. Put it back in and spin it dry. That's what we do with these things. So again, we're going to fill it with water. You're not going to be able to see it, so that's what I'm not telling you right now. We're going to fill it with water. Then we're going to take this one out. All the water drains out into the bottom bin. You dump that out. Put it on and you spin it. So let's wash the lettuce. And while that's going, while the water's going in there, we're gonna get the next step ready. Which is the cheese. The last one, the last step. Close to the last step. We got the cheese ready. Put our wonderful spices back. My lovely spice, I can't know if you see this. My lovely spice rack. I've shown it to you before. I love that thing. It keeps the spices easy to find and organized. Love it to death. Mm -hmm. A little more cold water. Let's see, I don't need this anymore. I'm not cutting anything anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, we are gonna cut the beef. We'll keep this out and cut the beef. Okay. Whoo, it's heavy. It's full of water. So this is what we do. You fill it with water. Massage the lettuce. Rinse it around. Sometimes you can just let it sit in water. If you like, let it sit in the water so that it, whatever bad things are on it, dirt or anything, gets out. I like to massage it myself. I guess I'm impatient. Anyway, so that, ooh, I can, I can smell that beef. That beef smells good. All right, once you've done that, so you're gonna lift this out. All the water comes out. We dump out the water. And then we spit it dry. Oh, it's been like three times. If you don't have a salad spinner, a vegetable spinner, might call it. You're going to want one. If you're the ding dong, is my brother, here. he's over to watch the, the second game, which is the. Uh... Oh, it's almost right. It's almost 5 30. I didn't shake. There's a lot of water in here that we dripped out. The, the Rams take on. Uh, Detroit, that's the Detroit Lions. So you push down, the lettuce spins. Push the button if you want, tire of it spinning. Come on. Or you can let it spin forever. Open it up, pull out the lettuce tray, and there's water in the bottom.
So the first time was a lot of water, you might have heard it dump out. Second time, less water. Third time, I do spin three. Slow it down to stop, perfect. And there we have it. Very little water left. You have washed and mostly dried your lettuce. Wonderful. Lettuce is done. We're gonna leave that over here. Beautiful. Uh, next is cheese. So lettuce cheese, sour cream is just you take it out. You stir it up, your sour cream. Just buy the good stuff, buy the dudes, and buy the good stuff. The cheese. I need a bunch of cheese. A lot of cheese. A lot of cheese is really good. Plus, I can use that cheese later, like tomorrow, if I was going to make an omelet again. Uh, we're going to use some cheese. So since we use a lot of cheese, I am going to use one of those fancy schmancy kitchen devices. It is, what is this thing called? I can't remember. I can't remember offhand. Um, the Professional Salad Shooter. That's right. Salad Shooter. Why is it? Just, it's a salad shooter. All right, so what do we want? Oh, I have a block of pepper. Okay, we're not using that. I have so much, wow, of this cheese. Whew. All right, let's see what the cheese So we are a big fan of the Colby Jack. There it is right there, Colby Jack. That's the cheese we like, it's Colby Jack. So I have some leftover right here. That one gets shredded first in this wonderful device. It saves me so much time. I only use this, honestly, it was just the three, my daughter, my, my wife, and myself, just the three of us. I wouldn't bother using this professional salad shooter, but since it goes right in there, right in there, twist it, boom, goes in. But, and this is not a pain to clean, why? You just rinse it off, put in the dishwasher. Put in, well, there's a finer shredder, but we're using this, that's a finer, I could buy the finer shredder. No need. This one's good enough. It's the uh, medium shredder. You got your top, so you can smash the cheese down. And I need the ring, ah, oh, there it is. The black ring that holds it together. Perfect. Now, it's ready to go. And we are going to shred some cheese. You know what? More than that. Um, scissors again. Yep, scissors. It's a fresh bag. Okay, there we go. Scissor it open. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh, this knife can use a little help. I can use a little help with this knife. Usually, I have a cheese knife that I'll use to cut the cheese, but since, cut the cheese. All right, let me see, there we go. Since this knife has been used, I don't need to worry about that kind of knife. There you go, boom. Big old chunk of cheese. That's not enough cheese. Especially for me, I love cheese. And boom. And especially if you want to melt cheese, do not buy the pre-shredded stuff. No, never, uh-uh, not, not a, no, uh-uh. Don't even think about it. It's not good, okay. Can't do it all at once, we can do quite a bit at once though. So we'll just start. Beautifully shredded cheese. Look at all that. There it is. Nicely shredded. Took no time. Didn't have to use my arm very much at all. I love this thing. Yeah, there is a link in the description if you want to buy one. I get a little uh, kickback from Amazon every time you buy something in my link's description. Right there. That part could not be cheese grated. It's okay. 
we want some more in there. I already cut it up. So we're gonna do more. And the reason that I'm gonna do more too is, it's okay if we have some left or I can use it. So here's the one drawback of using this to shred the cheese. But I'll show it to you. I'm gonna unplug it, take it apart. One drawback. Take it off, open it up. Here's a cheese that didn't get shredded. Or in other words, chest privilege. Mm. I love Kobe Jack. Mm. It's so good. Where are we now? See, there's lots of other cheese in there, I know. Ran through the dishwasher. Easy stuff. So if you need a ton of cheese, Oh, by the way, what do you do now? <laughs> you remember, right? The electric part of the machine you're gonna use, you wipe off. After you unplug it, of course, wipe it down, keep yourself clean. And this is ready for next time. Right over here next to the magic bullet. Okay, so now I have a ton of cheese, and this is the real stuff that melts. Most time when I use this uh, cheese grater like that though, I don't know if it'll work, we'll try. Usually when I use a cheese grater like that, it's because I'm going to uh, make some, something needs a lot of cheese, like lasagna. Okay, good, that'll work. The other thing is once, if you buy a block of cheese and as big as this one was, you'll notice it was really big. You may have noticed that if the cheese is exposed in the refrigerator to air, it's gonna get hard and crunchy on the edges. So what do you do? Put it in a Ziploc bag. Now I used to usually use gallons for these, gallon size bags, but I ran out. So I'm gonna have to just use a uh, sandwich size Come on, come on, come on. Uh, there, come on. There it goes, there, ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Sealed up. And you always, always, always want to zip up your cheese again. Zip it up again. Do not leave it exposed. This whole part will get crusty and hard. You have to cut it off, shred more cheese. Just get a Ziploc. All right, now for the best time which is to cook the tacos. By the way, so if you're wondering what the thumbnail is going to be today, because I'm just putting the cheese over here in the uh, eat me zone. What about the thumbnail? The thumbnail is going to be 100%, 100% uh, cheesecake and only cheesecake. I guess I could do the steak too, I don't know. Uh, the lettuce is going to go over there as well. No, I'll fix a taco. You'll see me eat a taco, trust me. I'll have a taco. I will have one of these awesome tacos. It's not like grandma's tacos. They're better. Better than grandma's tacos. Better. All right, getting this stuff ready. Move this out of the way. What's next? Mm. Cooking the beef. All right, one other thing I got because my fam likes them. Where did I put them? Oh, great, oh, super. I know I put them in, ah, oh, there they are. So if you don't have a place like Superior Grocers that makes these hard shells for you, yeah, you can get the Taco Bell versions, they work. 
But this is the, that's a 20 count. It's pretty inexpensive. I think it's about three bucks for all of them. Not bad. They break easily. Personally, I'm a flour tortilla guy for my tacos. I don't really like the corn tortillas or the corn crisp ones are okay. I like flour though. But it's time to cook the meat. It's time to cook the meat. Let's get this right. Okay, see here you can. There we go. So the meat's up there. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna slap it in the, uh, the skillet. A non-stick skillet, to be honest. Just gonna cook the meat. Use one of the bigger skillets. I do have cast iron. Don't wanna use that here. We already used it once today, right? Okay, all right, so it should be good. Let's uh, heat it up. Ooh, there it goes. Boom, we got flame. All right, we're gonna turn that down. That's way too much flame. We do not need that huge amount of flame. That looks good. That looks good. What are we gonna do? Huh. What should I use? What tool am I going to use? Ah, there's the one I want. The tongs, because it's big and thin. Don't need any oil in this pan. Just need some steak. And we'll cook it. There, hear that sizzle? That is a nice sizzle. Maybe I want a little higher. That is, I know it gets hot. Nice sizzle. Get a second one. And then we're just gonna cook it. You know what? In the end, we're gonna have a lot of, uh, notice how the beef kind of turned brown. We're gonna have a lot, huh. Get some sauce in there to see what I'm doing. Get some of the sauce. Get some of the veggies in there. Now this is gonna be full of that stuff when we do the other ones. There we go. More. More, 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 more. Just gonna keep flipping it. So it cooks to a good thinness. Pretty good heat going on there. See that flame? Nice flame. Huh. It's a nice campfire stove that I got. Wanna get that so that you know I don't have to walk over there and uh, you know carry the camera with me over there. I can now carry this camera over here, the small one that you see right here. This camera. Right there you're seeing right here. That camera. I can take the camera and I can move it all the way over there to my stove if I need to. But hey. I think this is better. I get to see you face to face. You can see me from the front. See me cooking that wonderful beef. You can see it from the side camera as well. It is a nice way to do it. We also got here some tortillas. So we got the, those ones. And I got some corn, oh, flour, corn. I also got some flour tortillas. Some of some older ones, ah. Good, good, good. I haven't had that yet. I should, I should be done too. Box of egg, oh. Nice. Let's see. All right, so you got some corn flour tortillas too. We're gonna heat those up. There are a couple ways you can heat them up. Now I'm not gonna do it in a microwave, but I could. Because a long time ago, Grandma got one of these for me. This is a microwave tortilla heater. Ooh, 
That gets really hot. Put the tortillas right inside. Set the microwave, depending on how many put in, for about 10, 15 minutes. Boom. Tortillas are nice and warm. Flour ones, at least. And you can do that. Another thing you can do. Nice. Yeah, that's getting nice and hot. Cooking it nice. Don't need really the brownness. I'm not looking for the Maillard reaction, although you could. Don't need that. Another thing you do is you can put like a little grill here on top. I've done that before. Put the tortillas on top to warm them up. Let me show you. How that one works. You can stick them in foil. You can just stick them on top of the stove. So many options. Let me show you the grill technique. While you're cooking your meat, steam your tortilla. There you go. I did this all the time, back at home. Oh, I used to make quesadillas for myself too. That was another thing I used to make. Oh, chili burritos. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to think of all those foods. If you look at my uh, foods, I have a whole bunch of foods you can look at. This is a nice way to steam your tortilla. You gotta wash that the grill. Ah, this is really cold right here. It's fine. It's nice and steamed. Warm up your tortilla. Nice and warm. It's okay though. The wife and the family, they're probably gonna want to use the chips, make some uh, taco salad. There we go. Nice and steamed. Nice, ready to go flour tortilla. Of course, you know, I should probably cover after I heat them, but that's not gonna heat them today. I can cover them with this though. <laughs> cover with a towel. We use paper towel. I feel the wife likes paper towel better. Why? I'll tell you why. Because she feels it's cleaner than our towels that we have elsewhere. There we go. That's the first one. Uh, it sounds like it's ready to flipping. You can kind of see the redness. Okay. Looking pretty good. Ooh. That is a little hot. Yeah, it's a little too, let me smoke that down a bit. Yeah, let's smoke it down a bit. See, it's more flour tortillas. Woo, sorry, yeah. Gotta get on these edges, those edges are the cool ones. Funny. I also have the other thing, I could do it, don't worry about it. What's in that hot? One tortilla at a time. What's next? Um, oh, the tray, I need, ah. You wanna heat up the other tortillas? This is the tray for it. Now I gotta be a little careful. Opening this, so it's easy to crack these tortillas. In fact, you gotta anticipate some of them to be a little cracked. Hmm. Like the top one just got crunched. Top couple. Anyway. You open them up. And see, form just like the Taco Bell tortillas. You take them out, put them on the tray, and heat them up. That'd be probably if you must have done by now. And put it in the oven for about oh, five minutes. That's why I haven't done them yet. The five minute thing. I'll get one more in here. There you go, beautiful tortillas. All right, let me get this one. This tortilla looks like it's pretty, yeah, it's close. Close, not quite yet though. And this, I think the meat is cooked. Mm. 
These things what I'm looking for. If you want these things, you can just do this. Easy. Right, and there we go. There it is, a nice flour tortilla. Warm them up. Yeah, these are big for tacos, I know. We like big tacos. Okay. Looks like the meat's probably done. I might. I like a little more oil in here. Okay, yeah, that meat looks pretty good. Put it over here. It's a little thicker, I know. Okay. I think I want a little oil in the pan. Thought maybe I'd have enough oil from the... There we go. Thought maybe I'd have enough oil from the meat itself, but no. Okay. Got a couple done. Let's get the other. A couple more. Ooh, that's a big one. Put that in there. Yeah. Oh, let's see what the other one looks like. Now it's another big one. Gotta do it separately. Perfect. Okay. Spread it out so it cooks faster. Let's take a look at the meat. Alright. Boom, 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 boom. And that's what's here. I get five or so of these done. All right, let's cook the other one. Spin them in for about five minutes. Five minutes is good. Get nice and, no, 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 not yet. Set off stream, why? Because that's for them, not for me. Me, I'm doing flour. Flour tortillas. Do I want to do that off stream? Because I want it hot for the rest of the family. They need all the ingredients. All the ingredients. Let me see. I need some. I want some. Don't need some. I need. I want some sour cream. Look at this one. I'm afraid to look at this one. How long has it been in the refrigerator for? Hmm. Too long. I already bought some more, so don't worry about that. I got some more. The good sour cream. The Knudsen sour cream. Yeah, I know. We're talking about. Don't do brands. It's okay. I'm doing brands today. Get my salsa out. We got the sour cream here. Fresh one. We got the guacamole. Steam my tortillas. Get out the guacamole, the nice guacamole. The wonderful guacamole. Oh, my daughter made some horchata too. I'm not gonna use a horchata myself, but we could if we wanted to. Okay, I need to grab that over here. Let's see. Nice little plate. For the beef once I cut it. We're running out of room over here, aren't I? That is kind of things with tacos, though. Run out of room. All right, let's do this off for a second. I want to flip the beef. Just a little bloody. It's good. Oh, that sign means, that buzzer sound means it's time for the cheesecake. So think about how long it took us to do the cheesecake. Very, very little time. So we started about 3.15, 3.30-ish. And right now it's, uh, by my time, 5.45. Now it goes in the refrigerator. It's cold enough to hold. Look at that, cold enough to hold. And now it goes in the refrigerator for the rest of the time. You. I need some space here, people. 
space for a wonderful, tasty, top the eggs. Oh, I know, it does say to cover, doesn't it? Parchment paper. If you do want to cover the cheesecake, I'll take a picture of that tomorrow when it's actually done. Actually, second thought, it's going to look the same tomorrow, just today. I'm going to touch it up a little bit. Now I'm going to take the thing off tomorrow. Never mind. It's not going to look the same tomorrow, just today. I'm going to take the thing off. All right, so we're going to cover it up, parchment paper. Take some parchment paper. I'll give you one last look. Yeah, wax paper, you cover wax paper. Foil work too. Give you one last look at the beautiful cheesecake that we have made. Oh, it just looks wonderful. I feel it, it's nice and firm. 55 minutes is very good for it. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. I hear your refrigerator. Yeah, if you want to invest in the refrigerator, a good one with the beepy beeps, it helps for you not to do stuff like this. Either the refrigerator open. Anyway, there we go. Nice and wonderful cheesecake. And in it goes. With parchment paper on Thank you. Parchment paper on top. Beautiful. And if you want to see it, it looks like we have a thumbnail tomorrow. The thumbnail tomorrow will have the cheesecake. Oh. So good. All right, this tortilla is definitely heated up by now. I'm going to use that to be my taco. I'll leave that there. I'm going to get the meat cut. So, take this off for now. I like flour tortillas. They got all the stuff out, right? Another flip. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Veggies are really charred, so we're not putting veggies on it. If you don't try the veggies as much as I did, you can probably put those on. The veggies, honestly, say were just the flavor, the onion specifically. All right, so we're gonna cook a little bit. It's gonna be good. Got my tortilla ready. Let's cut it up. I'm gonna season it in here. I'm looking for it. No, I think they put it over there usually. Um, let me see what's over here. I think it's usually put in. Yeah. Ha ha. Tong. Tong. We're going to cut up. You know. Move things around a bit. Still cooking, but I want you to see me cut up the beef. The first two. The first two. This one's still going, looking pretty good. All right, let me see. How big do you want the slices? Looks about good. Pretty well cooked through, it should be. Uh, I'll make them longer. Yeah, I'm gonna need, instead of this knife, I'm gonna use my real good knife for these. There we go, my carving knife. They'll cut through better, there we go. Cut. I'm absolutely going to taste them, do not worry. I just wanted more of a steak taco than a ground beef taco. That's why I chose to use this meat today. Now let's taste the end. Let's try this one. Cheers. Hmm.
Yeah, there's the cumin. Not spicy. I don't think I put the spice here, I know I didn't put spice in it. Hmm. A nice, well flavored meat. Hmm. Cumin is a strong flavor. You can still, yeah, you can kind of taste a little bit of garlicky. Yeah, we're probably done too. Get the last one in there. Nice little garlicky. Slot is not really coming through. Got to clear the onion though. The last one. So two pounds of beef. Should be plain enough for a family. A good flavor on the steak. The uh, vinegar is coming through. Taste that vinegar. Cut that stuff up. Cut the next one up. This is going to be small enough as is, I think. For it. Oh. Maybe not. Clean up the steak. It's not screaming flavor. It's just accent. It tastes like beef. With a little bit of lemon accent. A little bit of vinegar accent. Try this one. Try again, it feels like. Mm. I would have had more. Citrus to it. Mm. Nice flavor, nice accent. Mm. That's a good flavor profile there. Cook through. Overall, good flavor beef, cheap too. I mean, I will admit, it is not the softest of meat. It's not tender, but it was not meant to be tender. It was meant to be flavorful. It's a dry meat, but it is very nicely flavored. All the flavors are melting together. A good citrusy component. Uh, Complimenting the beef. Mm. This is good. Now I'm not gonna lie to you and say this is the best steak I've ever made. It's absolutely not the best steak I've ever made. But it's certainly, certainly will pass off for taco meat. I, you know, the reason for the beef here isn't for the steak itself. That's not the point. The point here is to put inside a taco, put inside a taco salad. And with that in mind, this beef will do the job nicely. Now I will see if it is again, I would probably add some more marinade. Well, actually, let no, no, no. Let me take that back. Let me try it in a taco first, and then I'll tell you what I was going to do with this. What I do this next time. Remember, this is the first time I ever made it this way. Thin beef using. Oops, using a fajita marinade. And yeah, this portable stove is working nicely. Very nice. Okay. Keeping that one up. No more to go. All right, so let's go ahead. You know how this works. So as you've been here before, we take and we make the dish. You put it together. I got all the ingredients here. All right, let's see how much beef do I need for this tortilla? A good amount. I want some salsa. That's fresh homemade salsa, by the way. Okay. I don't know. 
Hold on. I know what you want. Okay. Okay, so we got some beef going on here. There we go. I might do, I know. Let's put another slice in there. Some charred more than others. Really fine. Uh, we gotta get some, uh, so my order of condiments is usually cheese next, although usually that's because the cheese will be melting. We gotta put some cheese in there. From the ton of cheese that I've got. Some cheese, nice cheese on the top. Another good thing to put next to it is the salsa. So I'm gonna take my salsa. Now, if you're using like store-bought paste, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to make this fancy salsa. But if you wanna level up, flavor your taco, don't be afraid. Ooh, it still smells good. To use my favorite pico de gallo recipe. That's why I don't need the beef to taste, you know, perfectly flavorful. I'll be honest. And get some uh, guacamole in there. Some guac. Yeah, I guess I'll have to take a picture of it too, won't I? We'll spread it out. Another spoon for the sour cream. You know, gotta have it all. I love everything on my tacos. Everything. You know, so watch the meat. You can still see it there, still browning. We can flip it. You don't have to flip a lot, don't have to flip a little. Okay. It's actually looking pretty much done, doesn't it? You know what? We're just going to turn it off. It's done. Flame goes out. See? Flame gone. Oh, I love that so. Now that I figured out how to do it right, I was totally not doing it right earlier today. Like a layer of guac, uh, sour cream over here. And you know what the last thing I need? The lettuce. Let's get the lettuce over here. I right, get some lettuce. Put it on, yeah. Beautiful. So we're gonna, you know, make it up to, all right, there we go. I need a plate for this, of course. See you know how it works, it has to look beautiful. I said this up, gonna be a little hard to move, but we'll do it, we'll be smart. We'll be smart, we'll do it. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, wonderful. There you go. Nice little taco. A little bit of everything. All right, we gotta get the picture done. So I come over here for the picture. Once the picture is done. That's good. And then we're ready to say goodbye. All right. And then I'll let you know, success or failure? Taco thing that I've never done before. Oh, there you see. I need the light from perfect. Oh, a beautiful light. That's a beautiful light on this thing. Do not need the flash because the light from the lights is gonna work. We'll try one of these probably. I wanna make sure I have a good focal distance so I wanna be farther away. Beautiful. I'll bring it up close to you in a second. Hold on. Really? Okay. All right, let's do that again. I'm going to with the flash. Beautiful. All right, one of each is all I need. Tomorrow I'll get the cheesecake one. It's going to last. It's got to stay in there four hours, you know. All right, give you a chance to take a look. There it is. Got the sour cream, guacamole, meat, pico de gallo, lettuce, and cheese all ready to go, all wrapped up in a pretty darn big taco. 
All right. We're going to switch it back to this one. There you go. Beautiful. All right, let's take a bite and see if I like it. You know, maybe I'll hate it. Take a good bite. Got to make sure I get some meat in this bite, too. Okay, this end. Mmm. Mm. 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 I might say I could breathe a bit more taco because it was a part of tortilla. But that worked. Didn't need too much seasoning on the beef because all the extra condiments, mmm, like guacamole in there. The salsa adds a nice kick, a lot of flavor in there, the lettuce cheese. It's a good homemade taco with cheap beef and a simple fajita style marinade. This is a taco you should try. Uh, next episode is going to try one, trying to see if I can get somebody else. Um, with me tomorrow, tomorrow, next time we do this live, maybe in a live, maybe the next live is going to be in, try speaking in that. Hello. I don't know if it's working or not. Yeah, I don't know if it's working. Try again. Hello. Okay, so that is my son, and uh -huh. hopefully I'm testing right now to make sure both microphones are working. So next time, I'll watch the end of the video again. I'm going to see if I can get two people. Me Hello. and a friend. We're going to be here. I'll be cooking. He'll be cooking his favorite dish, or a dish he likes. And I'll be giving him my food as well, and we're gonna enjoy that a whole lot. Nice powwow, talking together, talking about whatever comes to mind. But in the meantime, try this way to make a taco. It didn't take very long, and it tasted really, really good. If you wanna make homemade tacos, just get the right ingredients. Not so hard. So this is it for the live, and again, we can't teach Taste test the cheesecake because it's going to be in that refrigerator for another four hours till it's done. But I hope you've enjoyed watching. And uh, if you do want to know how the cheesecake tastes, again, I have videos on my website of us tasting cheesecake. Just look for the cheesecake recipes in my videos and you will see it. Cheesecake plus the toppings. It's wonderful. Take a look at it. That's what it's going to taste like. And we have made a very beautiful representation of what it's going to take for you to make it. Piece of cake, you can do it. It's easy and it's better than you're getting in a restaurant. So I enjoyed hanging out with you guys for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.